All right, last one here. Let's go to uh, Lewandowski and his Polish friends. Um, Lewandowski and friends will try Don't you mean, to compete. Sorry, hold on a second. Don't you mean Swiderski and friends? Let's get it right <laughs> here. You're, you're right. You're right. <laughs> uh, they will try and compete with what is likely Lewandowski's last run at global football supremacy. Um, they did benefit from Russia being forced to forfeit the first of their playoff matches. Uh, before beating Sweden to book their spot in their ninth finals appearance. Uh, they do look to make it one step closer to their final game. They have finished third in two World Cups before, and they're looking to at least get to that final game. What about their uh, what about their last five? Last five for Poland, similar to a lot of the other uh, European teams. We're looking at Nations League for them. So mm-hmm. last five games in a pretty tough group, got to admit. Got a 6-1 loss to Belgium. That's not great. Uh, 2-2 draw no, no to... Deal. No. 2-2 draw to Netherlands. Uh, 1-0 loss to Belgium. 2-0 loss to the Netherlands. And a 1-0 win against Wales. Uh, rankings are ranked 2 for Belgium, 8 for Netherlands, and 19 for Wales. So tough group. I'll give them, I'll give them that. It was never going to be easy, but uh, form not the strongest coming in. Yeah, uh, and a little worrying, to be honest with you, that they're not competing with those top teams because while they could get out of this group here, um, it only gets harder as you go on. Yeah. The the Belgian loss 6-1 was what was worrying because they, they opened the scoring and just folded. No red cards. No, they had one substitution where they took out uh, Krachowiak and everything after that just folded. So um, there are some players to keep an eye on while you while you watch. One of them, of course, being Robert Lewandowski. For people who don't get that reference, by the way, look it up. Like if you yeah, don't know that by now, you're what do you? It was, I think it was Thomas Mueller who said that, right? It was Mr. It. Mueller. Yes. Yeah. So look that up. Yeah. Um, it's a great meme. Listen, he is here and out one of the greatest strikers in the world. Oh yeah, should have won Ballon d'Or. Like, oh, absolutely. That's the biggest. That's one of the biggest crimes in in football history. Absolutely robbed. Um, the dude scores goals for fun. He has five seasons with over thirty goals for club, uh, eight with them over twenty, five goals and five Champions League appearance this year on his way down with Europa Lona to the Europa League. Love that. Uh, Thirteen Hope it's goals. In my veins. Right, thirteen goals in twelve games in La Liga. Um, most of them coming against bottom half teams. Um. 76 goals and 134 appearances for Poland. Uh, one of Bayern Munchen's best ever players, two time FIFA player of the year, UEFA best player in Europe, 12 time football of the year between Poland and Germany. 18 times he was a top goal scorer for a competition he was in. Um, and uh, that's not even to mention all the German awards he won with Bayern. Uh, the dude can score from basically any service style you give him back to goal in the air. Uh, running in on his own, he can do everything. Uh, yeah, hopefully he can get out of the group. He is one of the best strikers of all time. So, of course, that's going to be a handful. Uh, one other guy I've got on my list is uh, Piotr Zielinski. Playing... Yo, me too. Nice. Uh, he's playing <laughs> Go for team. Go team. He's playing for Napoli this season. Got a seven one nine rating, one goal, four assists, and twelve appearances. Um, that was a bit more goals assist production than I was expecting from him, considering I see him more of as a, a midfielder, but I don't know, maybe he's playing more in an attacking role. In international World Cup qualifying, he had one goal and two assists. Um, and in Nations League, he had one goal, zero assists in six games. So I think he's going to be a super important player for them in the midfield. I think he's going to play a more creative role than people might expect. Um, and I think that's going to be massive importance when it comes to giving service to Levin Golski. So uh, if there's no service to Levin Golski, it's going to be hard for him to score. So I think Zielinski is going to be a massively important player. Correct. Um, he was taking part in every Nations League game for the Netherlands in either an attacking mid role or a second striker role. So uh, he's more involved in the... Uh, in the attack than usual. Uh, but yeah, he's definitely going to be trying to link that play, find Lewandowski and on goal, 
um, play the ball out wide so somebody can serve it into him. It's going to be all about getting that man on the ball, getting that man in the goals. So he will be a massive part of that. His success will directly correlate to what this team can do. Yes. I got one more. So do I. I bet it's the you same person. I, you know I love a good goalkeeper. Oh, uh, yeah. You know I do. Of course. Um, I dare you to try to spell his name without looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> Wojciech Chesney, the uh, John Luigi Buffon understudy at Juve for years before he gets his shot, and now he's consistently a top 10 goalkeeper in the world. He's a good shot stopper. He's good at controlling his box and, and you know organizing his defense. Um He's got a lot of good players coming at him. If Poland want to stand a chance, he's going to have to be massive. Um, you know, man of the match performances against some teams to um, to keep them in it. Sorry, I was just reading a note here going back to Zielinski that he had uh, three goals, two assists, and five Champions League appearances without going down and get wrecked Barcelona. <laughs> Sorry, I need to throw that in there. I need toxicity in my life. No worries, um, no worries. <laughs> Um, again, it's a, it's a, you know, I think goalkeeper is going to be a massive, massive part of this, this group. A lot of times you're looking at the center mids or the strikers or, or a center back or something, but the goalkeeper is going to be massive in this group. The team outside of Argentina, truthfully, the team with the best goalkeeper play is going to move on as the second team in this group. I genuinely believe it. Um, because somebody is going to pull out a Tim Howard versus Belgium esque performance. And make the difference, and that's that's what I'm I'm expecting. Yeah, I think uh, and not too much to add on my end. Um, I had a little trivia thing. Do you remember what club he was at before Juve? I want to say Arsenal, but I don't know if he made a move before that. I think he, I think no, it was I, Arsenal I know right he was at. It. I know he. I knew he was Arsenal. I didn't know if he made like a. Roma I think it was Arsenal Juve. straight to Juve. I, I could be mistaken, but that's what I was thinking of was his time at Arsenal. When, yeah, uh, I remember he was an Arsenal goalkeeper for a long time. He came in and he had baby face with a turtleneck. I remember his first time over at... Uh, uh, yeah, over uh, at and Arsenal. I feel like he never really got his uh, stature until he went to, to Italy. I feel like I remember yeah. him almost being like the scapegoat for Arsenal a lot when he was there. Oh, I was right. It went Arsenal to Roma for a loan and then a direct transfer to Juve. So I knew he went to Roma at some point. Look at me. Look at Man you know. knows ball. Man knows ball. Ball knowledge through the roof. All right. Should we move into uh, predicted 11? Sure. Tell me about what you think. All right. So I went with a 3-5-2 for them. So I've got Chesney in goal. I've got a back three of... Bednarek, uh, Jakob Kivior, Kivior uh, and Camille Glick. Uh, midfield five from left to right. I've got uh, Nikola Zalewski. I've got Kuchowiak. I've got Zielinski. I've got Simon Zerkowski. Uh, and then at the right spot, I've got either... This still shocks me to this day. I've got either Matty Cash <laughs> <laughs> or I've got Frankowski, which is also a throwback to MLS days. Um, oh, yeah. And then up top, I've got, of course, Lewandowski. And then at the other striker spot, I said either Piatek or Milik. Swiderski is angry at you. I think Swiderski might has, have a decent shot at starting, but I'm also kind of surprised if he ends up starting over those other two. No, I don't disagree there. Um, I mentioned how important it was going to be to be strong defensively in this group. So I went with a 4-2-3-1. Uh, Chesney in goal. Matty Cash on the right, which, <laughs> funny enough, he was going to be a key player for me until I was like, nah, it's Chesney's time. <laughs> but I was just going to do it just to talk about his, trend, his, his one-time switch, but Matty Cash with Bednarik and Glick in the middle. I got Puchaz on the left. The two-pack in front of him, I got Krachowiak and Linetti. In front of them, the three in front of them, I got Frankowski, Zielinski, and Kaminsky. And then one in front of him, um, Lewandowski. 
Get it? Golski. I get it. The the things I would do just to be Thomas Muller for a day. Say <laughs> things like that just to get away with it. Um yeah, so I think they go a little bit a little I think they leave Lewandowski alone. I think he's better off as a one um instead of working in a group because you can hold up and, and play off of him. Whereas if you're in a two, it's a little tougher to do that. Um this also gives a little bit more balance across the uh the entirety of the team. So uh, I think that's more more likely the way they do it. For me, the question though. The team just feels okay. Like you've got your you've got your big name players, your Chesneys, your Lewandowski's, but there's nobody who stands out as like an entire like it's not an Argentina team where everybody you look at is like oh my god. Do, are they just average? Like, do they have enough to get out? I think they have enough to get out. I almost kind of see it maybe in kind of like tiers. I think Argentina is a tier above Poland and Mexico. And then I would put Poland and Mexico in the same tier below them. Say it right. Sorry, Mexico. Thank you. Um, So I, I would probably say that I think they have enough to get out of the group. But I agree with you in that I, I look at this team on paper and I don't see this as a team that's competing to win the title. Uh, I think... It'll be a good tournament for them if they get out if they just get out of the group, even if they get knocked down in the round of sixteen. But I just I don't think they have the tools that they need to go far. I think it's relying too much on one guy, just like a couple of other teams we talked about previously. Yep, no no disagreements there. I think uh, it it does feel just a little bit meh. It's just a little meh. Um, you're going to rely on really three players to at least get you out of the group, but three players doesn't get you. Three players doesn't get you a title. You know, so uh, 